All right. Can we get the door shut? Okay. It's one, one, oh. Well, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. TwitchCon day one. How we feeling? <laughs> Woo! It's been three years, y'all, three years, and we're back at it again. So happy to be here with you all. Happy to be here with all these wonderful panelists. Can't wait to dive in. We're going to be talking about streaming as a hobby or a career. All right. Can we get the door shut, staff person who's outside? <laughs> They're not paying attention. I hope that, no. Hi, can we get the door closed so we can hear each other? Thank you. Oh. Oh, after, after okay. that. Fair yep. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, y'all. You know, a lot of people think streaming is easy, all right? But we're going to have a real talk about streaming, all the nitty gritty, and, you know, what actually goes into streaming. Can't wait to dive into it. So let's start off with some intros, all right? Tanya, how are you, dear? I'm sleepy and I'm full of food. You're full of food? Yes. What did you eat? At, a, at an event. Okay. You didn't give me no food? You didn't bring I, me none? Next time, text me. <laughs> I'll text you next time. But Tanya, can you tell us a little bit about you, even though there's a lot to share? <laughs> okay, the, the elevator pitch version is I've been streaming on Twitch for eight years. I've been a partner five, both in November of this year. I do a lot of TTRPG content, just chatting. Um, do creative, I paint dice, make dice, run a 3D printer on occasion, let people just watch that. And uh, I run my mouth on Twitch and on the internet. That's what I do. Hi, uh, I'm Chris Kinneas, or the Painting Pirate. Uh, I split my time between doing miniature painting, both like Games Workshop, Warhammer stuff, or TTRPG, 3D printed stuff, or Final Fantasy stuff, because I'm a massive Final Fantasy nerd and occasionally doing guest spots on people's uh, one-shot TTRPG games where they make the absolute mistake of inviting me on to cause chaos in piratical accents. Um, I'm uh, Dr. Rafael Bocamazzo. I apparently used to be a mental health professional, but now I'm like the lead singer of a Wallflowers cover band. <laughs> it's called the Three Marlenas. We are awesome. Uh, but uh, no, I'm a, I am a clinical psychologist in Washington State. I'm also the clinical director of what was at the time the very first mental health nonprofit to serve the game community, takethis.org. Um, I'm an expert on tabletop RPGs and clinical and learning settings, uh, consultant on the YouTube channel How to ADHD. Uh, I have a private practice somewhere in there, and I tend to sleep every now and then. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I believe that you sleep. Oh, no, I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. I'm Mandy. I'm known around the internet as Lady Luck 34 uh, I stream variety of whatever game I'm obsessed with at one point in time, and also crafty things like sewing and crochet. Uh, my background is podcasting, doing content, covering the games industry, and now I just stream for fun, which I think is a thing some of us do. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Um, hi, I am Milady Confetti. I use she, her pronouns. I um, am a full-time content creator. I do a lot of horror games. I also do a lot of cozy games as well. Um, I am a cosplayer. I am a host. I am also a podcaster. I'm new into that field. Um, I've been content creating for, I think, four or five years. Um, Tanya did the math for me because um, I, do, I don't believe in math. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. <laughs> Thank you so much for the intros. I just want to give a reminder to everyone, make sure you have your mask on your nose. So just a mask check really quick, everybody. And have one on. And have one on. <laughs> All right, perfect, thank you. So we're gonna get into, are you in it for fun or to make a living? What made you start streaming, Tanya? Dragon Age Inquisition. Ooh, that's uh, two, a good of, game. two of my tattoos are Dragon Age related. And uh, I love the game, love the series, and the PS5 was brand new. And I've, once I discovered I could stream straight from it, it was a done deal. And we can start with you next. Cool. Uh, I like attention. <laughs> I'm a theater <laughs> kid, and I really, really like it when people pay attention to me. Um, Sorry, who are you? <laughs> oh. Wounded. Hard. Wounded. Hi. No, it's, it's, I have a cat, please, I'm used to that, that's fine. <laughs> uh, 
no, seriously, when the, uh, when the pandemic hit was when I really first started streaming, and it was a case of, cool, I'm in my apartment alone all day. This really sucks, so I'm going to start talking at people, and maybe some of them will listen. And as it turned out, some of them did, which is kind of nice. <laughs> Uh, I started streaming to get my psychologist license, uh, and I'm not even joking. I, so I'm very public about uh, being both autistic and having ADHD, and for a lot of us, with one, the other, or both, uh, motivation and follow through is a big deal, especially if it's on our own. So I actually started up my own channel uh, just to have an audience to be accountable for while I studied silently for my licensure exam, we had the hashtag lurk and work, and basically I started running a study hall and you know, four, four times a week until I got my license. And other than that, it was basically because of TwitchCon 2016, I came and I did an evaluation of the show, and I, went, I didn't know what streaming was at the time. Looked around and went, this is neat, this is cool, I don't know what's going on, but okay, and then started learning more about it. I feel like I'm just going to repeat pirate a little bit where I had been streaming on and off. I actually think some of my first streams were back when Twitch integration was introduced on the PlayStation and I was playing, I think the destiny alpha when they first let you start streaming it. And I was like, Oh, this is neat company. Uh, and it was on and off, but similarly took a more consistent schedule over the past few years. Cause I was like, I, I would like some company who would like to keep me company while I do things. Uh, and, and play games. And I think some of the people here have seen me. I lurk in a lot of streams. I'm absolutely definition of work and lurk uh, and show up and like clip things. But it's fun to have that combination for me where it was like, okay, well, now let me go stream to have people keep me company the same way that hopefully I'm keeping them company when I'm lurking. Um, for me, um, I knew kind of midway through college that I wanted to work in the games industry. I just didn't know how and what I had access to. Um, so I was working at this like little small company, you probably never heard of it, called GameStop. And when I realized that retail wasn't the way that I wanted to go because, um, yeah, that just wasn't it. Um, I just I was introduced to Twitch um, from somebody who was a customer at GameStop. And me and my friend, we wanted to like be in games industry like so hard. So I kind of ignored Twitch and streaming because I was just like, eh, I don't think that's the lane for me. Um, but when my friend passed away, I kind of took up the mantle for the both of us and started streaming. I said, I'll give this a shot and see where it takes me. So I think like every step that I take is a step that we take together, even though he's not here with me. Ooh, I felt that one. <laughs> I felt that one, the lady. And there's so many different paths and journeys each one of these panelists have been on. So I'm super excited to hear about that throughout this panel. And let's talk about what's the difference between a career and hobby. Well, career, you know, you are trying to make all your bills be paid or most of your bills be paid with this. You're doing this full time. You're streaming six, seven, eight hours a day, five days a week. Please don't stream literally every day. Please take some time off. I know that's counter to what a lot of people advise on Twitch, but trust me, sleep is way more important than being on stream all the time. A hobby is like, eh, I'll stream when I feel like it. Maybe I'll have a schedule, maybe I won't. I'm not like trying to get sponsorships. I'm not trying to do any of this stuff. It's just, this is cool. I can hang out, especially in the last three years where we've all been at home, hopefully being safe. Um, it's a way to connect with other people, but you're not in it strictly for a profit to make a name for yourself. You may not be concerned with getting partner. You just want to get online and hang out and do whatever it is you like doing and sharing with the world. I think I'll you know, append on to that because you pretty much nailed everything there was to say about that. But just to spin the question around a little bit, I'd also add that the one thing that is not a difference between streaming as a career versus streaming as a hobby is both are entirely valid approaches. Like neither is inherently better than the other. Like sure, yeah, there's streaming as a career, you get to do it full time, cool, but streaming as a hobby is still just as valid. You're still out there, you're still doing the thing. And just that step of pressing that go live button for the first time is such a huge hurdle. Like there's, it's an incredibly powerful thing to be doing regardless of which side of that you happen to fall into or into the weird like hybrid space between the two of them, which is where I think probably honestly the vast majority of streamers really fall into, I think. 
Well, and I'll, I want to throw on the idea that your channel is not the only viable, the only vehicle towards a career. Um, you know, about a year and a half ago, actually, it was Tanya and I who had a conversation uh, about, I, you know, I was at this sort of weird crossroads of my own career as a psychologist. And, you know, I talked to her. She's been, she's been successful with her career as a streamer. And I asked, okay, well, should I grow my channel out and, you know, specifically my channel? And her response was, okay, think about this. You were in school for years and you already have a career doing what you love. How much time is it going to take to build out your channel to be a primary source of income as opposed to using it in other methods? And so my, while my channel is there almost nominally at this point, it's a way for me to kind of keep my toe in the streaming water while I broadcast on other people's channels, while I do, while I do consultations with game studios, while I do mental health workshops for streamers because I still have a toe in that water and I know some of the stressors in a way a lot of other mental health professionals do not. Because a lot of other mental health professionals just, if they even know about it, oh, they're playing video games for fun. How hard could that be? I'm like, oh, baby, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's important to acknowledge that it can change over time. As several people here have already mentioned, we've been doing this for years. Like, if I look back, Twitch integration was introduced on a PlayStation, I think, in 2014. So it's been a while, and what you want to do and what you want to make out of that can change over time. I thought about it where it could have been an option to really focus on content creation and build a career, and I decided that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted it to be a hobby. And over time, how much I put into it and what my focus is changes. And that's totally valid. That's what life is, you know? So it's important to think about that too, that maybe you're not starting with the goal of it being a career, but it could become that. Or similarly, maybe you decide, hey, you know what? What I get out of this is really more worthwhile to me as a hobby. And as Pirate mentioned, both are equally valid. I think for me recently, um, especially like going to therapy and doing a lot of healing myself, um, I have the change, with being a career and what's, what's my career and what's my hobby has like changed um, a little bit. Um, like I think you can have, well you can have both, you know, be fun. Like your, your career can be fun, have fun elements to it. And your hobby, obviously, like you should be doing something that is fun. Because um, is it a hobby? But um, I think for me, like a hobby is something that I do where it's not to be consumed by other people. Um, so for me, like I like to skate and people ask me all the time for skateboarding videos. And I'm like, why? So you can consume that and rip it apart and take the fun out of it? Why would I do that? Mm -hmm. um, that's something that is for me. While, meanwhile, my career in streaming, like, you know, I make that stuff to be consumed. You know, if I choose to do a skate, I won't do a skateboarding video. But if I choose to do something or take a hobby and put it in that career section, it's just easier for me to, like, differentiate it to. So I have some form of sanity and I have something that is mine. Um, because, you know, I, I think that's just how I have to have balance. And I think for like me healing and me processing a lot of that, that has really shifted for me. Because yes, a hobby can be a career, but like for me and my like mental health, I need it to be separate. So I can be okay and be like, yeah, that's just a hobby. Like I play Persona 5 Royal off stream and people ask me to bring that on stream. I'm like, ah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm gonna leave that for me. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. And you know, can you do this for fun and make money? Yes, you can. I think we all started in that path. I know I did, I know a couple of the panelists have as well. So can you do this for fun and make money, Tanya? Well, how are we defining make money? <laughs> make money any way you have with your community. Oh, money. <laughs> if, if we're looking strictly on a return on investment, I have not made back really what I've put into streaming over the last eight years, but I have been able to do activations, do other things. So you can make money, but again, you need to really think about how much do I need to live off of and how much work am I going to put in before I start getting that return on investment back? Because the next slide will show us just how cheap or not cheap it is to start streaming. I think the other aspect to that, too, that's important to remember is, like, can you do it for fun and make money? Yeah, sure, you can, but it's not going to be 100% fun 100% of the time. The, the work can, can be fun, but there are going to be days where it just sucks. Like, the last thing that you want to do is hit the go live button. It's like, you got the schedule thing, but 
you're just you're having a bad mental health day, you just don't feel up to it, in which case, cool, cancel that, put your health first, because if you're not feeling it, you're not going to be being entertaining for people, so better just cancel it. But be very realistic about, you know, this is not, as we're going to get into, this is not a thing where you hit, just go live, and an audience, boom, magically apparates. There is a lot of work to get to do the parts of it that are fun. So, it, yeah, can it be fun? Absolutely, but don't underestimate. There's going to be a grind, too, especially if you want to focus more on the career side than the hobby side. And there's also a danger to, I mean, we've all heard that expression, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. And anybody who's ever streamed is like, that is complete <laughs> BS. <laughs> yeah. Because it is. Because if you do what you love, you will overcommit. You'll work more hours. You will blur the line between your personal life and your work life. You may not even know which one's which at some point. That's and it. Doing what you love for a career is wonderful, especially if it gives you purpose, it gives you meaning, it gives you enjoyment. But um, it's also, if you're not careful, a path to burnout unless you do what Milady Confetti did and really delineate what's yours and what's for public consumption. Because I don't care how big of an audience you have, if you have an audience, you are a broadcaster, okay? It may be broadcasting as a career, uh, excuse me, as a hobby, but you are a broadcaster. It may be just your friends, you are still a broadcaster. And so you have to make, you know, one of the best things you can do to make it fun and hopefully eventually make money is have that delineation of what's broadcasted, what's mine. And I'll add on to that too, is it's just thinking through some of the simple things that you do, which is like, okay, I'm gonna schedule time to work on social posts. And that's the same way that you might have a nine to five job, if, if that's still a thing. Uh, <laughs> but the same way that you would say, here are my hours that I'm doing, or I have 30 minutes for a meeting, be able to give yourself those boundaries and lines when you're doing this work in support of your channel, regardless of whether it's a career or a hobby. Like, I fully commit, I do this as a hobby, but I schedule time for myself where I say, after my day job ends, I'm gonna feed myself, I'm gonna walk my dog, and I have 30 minutes set aside that I have scheduled for my stream work. And that's some of the ways, too, to just keep in mind that, yeah, the lines blur when you're just like, oh, I'm just gonna get this done. And then two hours later, you're like, well, I've done a lot more than I had planned, and suddenly my night is gone. So I'm from a higher education background and, you know, the American education system and how they pay educators is <laughs> awesome. Um, so, but the thing is like, you know, I really, I really did love my job because I worked in residence life and I worked in orientation and um, <laughs> didn't make a lot of money. But the thing is, it was the joy that I got from doing the job that made it worthwhile. Also, though, on the realistic end, you know, you do have bills to pay, you have things to do. Um, I think for me, like in like my higher ed situation, and also now, like, again, like doing a lot of healing and processing and stuff with therapy is, you know, money is not the driver for the things that I do. Because um, when you're chasing a money, you're going to burn out. You're, you're chasing something that is materialistic. Um, that's just what works for me. I'm not out here saying, you know, you know, the vibes and all the other stuff. But the thing is, it's like, because I was chasing money so much and because of like, um, I would say generational trauma, I was so like attached, like I need money. What's that next check coming? When is that coming? Like, what am I going to do? That it was just hurting me in the long run. And like, I had to do a lot of like healing to learn to let that go because that wasn't my trauma. That was my mother's. So I had to learn to let that go and work through that. Sorry, mom, I'm putting your business out there. <laughs> Should be all right. Burnout is so real. You have to take care of yourself. And sometimes you don't know when you're burnt out. Sometimes you have to talk with other people. Like, hey, have you noticed any changes with me? You know, I've talked to my mom. I talk with my partner. They're like, yeah, you're a little burnt out. And I know when I realize burnout is happening is when I struggle to do content, when I struggle to hit that go live button. It's just really important to try to realize when you are or just ask for help. Can, can I jump in on that real quick? Because I've become sort of our organization's de facto expert on burnout. Mm -hmm. Burnout's more than just exhaustion. Okay, the most popular model of occupational burnout that's been used since 1981 has three parts to it. And Take This has some wonderful free resources on our website. Go check it out, takethis.org on this. Um, but there's three parts that we think about when it comes to burnout. One of them is exhaustion, and we're not just talking mental, exha physical exhaustion. We're talking the kind of exhaustion where you can't sleep and catch up. Okay. We're talking in effectiveness at your job. Yes, yeah, streaming's hard, technical errors happen, but it becomes so much harder and you are genuinely less effective at it when you are burning out. 
And three, cynicism or detachment. You, you got no Fs to give anymore, okay? The F train has left, you're done, you, you, you got nothing. And you might even be getting irritated with people on your stream and your personal life and so forth. And it doesn't go away. Burnout is not something that you can take a vacation and solve. It is chronic. I know people who, a friend of mine who left his job and could not work for a year because of burnout. Burnout is no joke. And so watch out for those signs, folks. Absolutely. Thank you. And we're going to get into the streaming equipment 101. Quick and dirty, all right? We have your microphone, your headset, webcam, if you want to include a green screen, if that's your form of content. We have our lighting setup, monitors if you need extra ones. I know I started off with one, and you'll eventually need some more. <laughs> and if you want to have a soundboard, overlays, emotes, all of that comes into streaming. Now, do you have to have that all at the initial part of your content creation journey? No. You build and you grow. And I wanted some of the panelists to touch on what were some of your initial equipment pieces of your content journey? So just really quick, this slide is one that I've used when I've given this panel before. Um, I did one at MIGS with a couple of our other friends, and I've done this at uh, PAX a couple times. My equipment costs were very little of these because I started direct off console. And for those that don't realize it, a lot of people think you have to be on camera, you've got to go out and spend $400 on a microphone. Your audio quality can make or break a stream versus having a camera or not. So I made sure I had a good headset where I was clear and crisp, especially with a headset because all your audio is going in and back out to the stream. Your voice is coming in and going out. So I just had a really good Logitech headset and the PS5, which you know has good audio in it. And as I streamed more, because when I started, I didn't have a PC that could stream and, and play games. Some games, I still can't stream and play games because they're too demanding. Um, but my initial costs were like the cost of the PS5, which I'd spent anyway. And um, I'm sorry, the PS4, I'm getting ahead of myself. I've been streaming longer than the PS5 has been out. Uh, PS4 and a good headset, so a few hundred dollars. And eventually, as I start PC streaming, a few thousand dollars, um, <laughs> and GPUs cost the earth and your firstborn and a leg and an arm, so my soul is now damned for streaming. Mm -hmm. I would say too, with the, the list that was, was just up there too, because my perspective on it is slightly different because the, the list was very much focused around streaming video gaming. I'm a creative streamer. My predominant uh, focus is miniature painting. So some of those are great, uh, but others, like the, the focus shifts a little bit as to what's most important. Like the audio quality absolutely remains probably the single most important thing. I would 100% agree with that. Lighting. If you're doing any form of creative streaming, lighting over camera every day of the week, you will get way more benefit from having a cheap off-the-shelf webcam versus your fancy DSLR if you have appropriate lighting. Like that, upgrade your camera equipment all you want. If you don't have a basic understanding of how lighting works, it's going to look like garbage on stream. Also, you know, with that type of stuff, remember what you are putting out is kind of different than what people are putting, uh, like receiving in. Like this was actually something that I had to have a friend of mine kind of smack me in the head and go, you're overthinking this, stop, what are you doing? To where I did, I did the upgrade to DSLR streaming for my miniature painting and was getting kind of frustrated because the camera was kind of lagging because I was trying to output it in 4K. Because I was like, okay, cool, I've got the cool DSLR, I can do this. Until my friend, um, Stephen Joyce, who also streams, told me, you realize nobody is viewing your stream in 4K, right? <laughs> what you were seeing is not good. So bear that in mind, too. Like you, what you do is going to, you know, you don't need to get to ridiculous high studio level stuff to start out, especially because very few people are going to see it that way, especially the huge amounts of people who watch on mobile. Like, my lord, that's a significant chunk of the, of the user base as well. So, but even, even then, though, initially, my, my first costs were a cheap $15 desk lamp I bought on Amazon and a base level Logitech webcam and a little like arm to put it pointing down. That's all I started with. Did it look great? Nope. But it was enough to determine, OK, this is something I enjoy. This is something I want to keep doing. So I'm OK to sink more money into this, which at this point, while it's not quite the, the thousands level is uh, that DSLR, it's approaching it now, which is, hmm. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's something that you know I enjoy and it's worth it to me. But 
definitely like, oh God, I've seen stories of people who sink like $500 into their VTuber avatar before they've ever turned their, their stream on for the first time. It's like, don't do that. No, no. Like you can, you can ease, ease into it, but mm -hmm. also be realistic about the bear level. Like it's not gonna be cheap, but it doesn't need to cost the world either. And uh, you know, that's, that's, sim that's how I did my equipment. I, sl I upgraded over time. And I want to I want to say think about what you're doing. I mean, the same way everybody else has said so far, think about what the purpose of your streams. Think about the framework. I do a lot of workshops. I do a lot of teaching. I do a lot of talking. In fact, the only consistent streaming I do is a weekly talk show um, through Codename Entertainment. Um, come check us out, Champions of Psychology. Uh, but the but so my microphone became incredibly important because I do talking. I started with just a Yeti. And I, I still will maintain that dollar for dollar, the Yeti Blue is just one of the best things you can do. But you know, after a while, I, I noticed that it wasn't quite doing what I wanted it to do. So I upgraded to the next level microphone. And then I was like, OK, that's not quite sounding the way I hoped it would. And then I really made the plunge. And now my microphone is ridiculous. But um, <laughs> Yeah, now I'm having conversations with audio guys in the way I never thought I would in my life going to psychology school. <laughs> and I think it's important too to think about what you have on hand. Like what can you repurpose to some extent? Uh, so I had a slightly different way in because I'd been podcasting for years before I started streaming. I already had a large gaming PC because that was the way that I had committed to playing games. So a lot of that initial equipment were things I already had. And I just had to think differently about what I was using and where. And when I started adding in other aspects to my streaming, so when I started adding in doing crochet or sewing, it was about, well, I had this extra table sitting in another room. Well, why don't I combine those together? And then I just got to figure out wire management to set my camera up to get that. And hey, you know what? I don't need a second camera. I can just find a creative way to be able to position it, and I just have to shift it before each stream, depending on what I'm doing. So absolutely be conscious of what you want to do and how much you want to spend to start. But also, don't be afraid to look at the things that are just sitting around your place and say, what can help me accomplish what I want to do to start with? Because for me, it's been a very gradual, like okay, finally, maybe I'll buy a second cheap webcam. That way I'm not moving it from one table to another every time I want to stream. And okay, maybe I'll actually set up my tables in a way where it's all combined. So it's a little bit easier for me to be able to turn and look at my screen and see chat. Um, but it's, you know, you can find interesting ways of using things that you probably already have that you haven't thought about and use that to start. And as you get used to doing it, you can say, OK, what do I really need here? Like, What's going to change the quality of my experience as a streamer? Because quality of life when you do stuff, totally important. Uh, and then what's going to have a material impact on the quality of the content I'm making? And then you can actually start looking at where does it make sense to put your dollars to help level yourself up. Um, for me, I think the the my first, I guess, big piece that I invested in was my computer. But one thing for me, um, I'm very much, uh, I love sales. I love when things are on sale and I can get them cheaper than the actual price that they are. So one thing I did, I took advantage of things like Black Friday. Um, I took advantage of my GameStop discount because periodic table. Um, so I think I got the red Yeti that came with the Assassin's Creed bundle when Ooh. that was a thing. Um, and then I got my little 15% discount. <laughs> um, but um, also, like in January, a lot of like games and stuff don't come out, and a lot of things aren't happening because all the holidays have just happened. A lot of stuff goes on sale around that time, so that's probably the time to do that. And then tax season, more sales happen. So I was very just strategic of when I was going to get something, and I did things over time. Like I'm not gonna be out here, and I was on an educator budget. Like I don't. <laughs> I wasn't out here buying like a bunch of um, stuff, um, but I did do things over time and I always, always would search for a sale or somebody's coupon or a friend's coupon or a friend's discount. Oh, you work at Best Buy? Come here, let me, I'm your cousin today. <laughs> we gonna go get a discount today. Um, so we, I, I made it work. Um, I'll find a way. <laughs> and I want to throw out too, like there's a lot of, like the internet, sometimes it's terrible, but sometimes it's great. Uh, there's a lot of tools that help you, you know, whether it's, looking for what the current deal is, whether it's like 
you know, compatibility of parts if you're building a PC. Like, there's a lot of stuff that can help you be able to take advantage when there's good sales and find the best deal. Like, you just gotta look, and those can help you make it a little bit more cost effective when you are choosing to do any upgrades. Yeah. And don't be afraid of pre built, because there was such a stigma about that. I bought my little cyber power thing at Best Buy for $800, and they were like, oh my God, don't do that, build your computer. I can't afford that, so I'm gonna get this, because it's half off. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And we're gonna talk about when you stream as a hobby versus career, and I'll have Tanya take over for this one. Yeah, with my with my uh, bifocal eyes, I can kind of see the the, the panel. <laughs> um, but you know, this just kind of reiterates what we talked about earlier. But here's some bullet points for those of you that need, you know, some text, some other things. But things that you know we talked about, or things that I've presented about, some where it's a hobby, where it's very casual. You're not concerned with your status. You're not like, oh my God, I'm not an affiliate. I'm not a partner. Um, you don't keep what's you don't keep up with what's hot and new. And that's not to say that you don't do that as a hobbyist, but it's a little different. I think when you're monetizing, you're trying to build an audience, get to either affiliate or partner, and you're like, okay, well, what's hot this week? And this is just an aside. Don't chase whatever just came out, because you'll be you may be the small fish also streaming Persona 5, Final Fantasy 7 remake, what have you, when other people are streaming it and they've got an established audience and there are people who watch them you know, they'd watch them like they'd watch paint dry. So play what's good for you or do whatever your content is, mini painting, just chatting with people. Don't try to chase trends. And that's whether it's a hobby or career. Um, you're not worried too much about social media. If people show up cool, if not cool, you're just chilling and hanging out. Um, maybe you don't want to network. Maybe you're just like, this is my thing. Maybe this is your thing for you. A lot of us do stuff off stream to have it for us, but maybe streaming is your thing for you. It's your social outlet. So you're, again, you're not concerned with trying to monetize what have you. And, uh, and cool, if you make money, great. And if not, it's not the end of the world. Maybe you got a full-time job and this is again, your fun thing. But when you're trying to make a career out of this, you've got a schedule, you know what you're doing, you kind of plan out your content, hopefully you plan out your content. Do not look at me as an example of this because I absolutely do not do this. <laughs> um, you go from community member to getting that affiliate and that sub button to hopefully getting partner one day. You do kind of keep up with what's hot and what's new, but again, your content should reflect what you want to do and what your audience is coming back for. You're very keyed into using social media. A lot of us have started using TikTok to drive people to Twitch, using YouTube Shorts to drive people back to our full streams, things like that. Uh, you have a brand. I hate to tell you this, but once you start making money off this and you become a A influencer, B, you're a contractor when you say, yes, I'll be an affiliate or partner, and you are self-employed. So you need to create a brand, be consistent. And I know there's sessions going on Creator Camp about becoming a brand. Um, come to things like TwitchCon, go to things like PAX East, uh, GEC, if you're interested in making games eventually. And um, it's a major part, if not all, of your income. For me, streaming is a major part, it's not all of it. Um, and especially with the economic downturn that we're seeing, it is still a big part of your income. And if you lose subs, it's a thing where you're like, oh, that's unfortunate. And then you may have to change up what you're doing or try to refresh things. Uh, and I'm going to turn it back to Ash, because I think one of our friends in the audience is on the next panel, is on the next uh, screen. Yes, that is Kiwi on the 6, all right? I was streaming on a laptop from an Ikea kitchen chair until my community stepped in and said, enough is enough, brokey. <laughs> <laughs> so she shared that with her, you know, on her Twitter community a couple weeks ago, just showing, you know, this is the beginning, and here I am now, fully yeah. upgraded equipment, you know? You start, <laughs> you start with, you know, whatever you have. I am a big big person on saying start with whatever equipment you have and you go from there the journey is beautiful seeing where you started and to where you are now all right cypher so gee i told you i was a dragon age nerd huh <laughs> but yeah this is just quick bullet points reiterating um confetti um and i found that i actually enjoy streaming so fun fact i did not think i would like streaming i was like i'm just gonna play dragon age that's gonna be me for streaming and now, eight years later, look at where we are. 
And then we have Milady, and she told us a little bit about her background at GameStop. She's a broadcaster, winner, and host. Lost her job due to COVID, so she started getting into full-time content creation. Now she's a content creator, Twitch partner, and more. Cosplayer, everything. It goes on. <laughs> and has the funniest starty stream ever. <laughs> and then Painting Pirate. Live. Oh, wait, I think everybody wanted to say something. Oh, yeah. Wait, what? I thought you wanted to say. <laughs> I thought you wanted to say something. Oh no, that 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 was it. I was just the, the picture. It's <laughs> you gave me the picture. I know. <laughs> and painting pirate lifelong interest in many painting and video games. 2020 happens. Pandemic hits. Suddenly lost lots of time at home. Figure streaming could combine first two points: performing and love of hobby. Profit? <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, can you tell I really don't know how bullet points work? <laughs> uh, the only other thing I, I want to add, just an additional thing too, regarding like kind of when I started streaming and a, an assumption that I had made about streaming when I started that turned out to not be true, and I'm probably going to get glared at. So I'm going to focus on this side of the audience for a little bit, so I can't feel Tanya's glare in the back of my head. Um, she's one of the major reasons I started streaming because I had the assumption that the only thing that really existed on Twitch was the loud, yelly. FPS gamer bros. I had no idea that crafting Twitch existed. I had no idea that mini painting existed on, on this platform. So that was, uh, Sonia was really my uh, like gateway into realizing, oh no, there's, there's a place for the kind of more chill vibes, crafty type of content. So that was a, a huge aspect to it as well as discovering, no, there's a community here for this. And okay, cool. This is something I want to be a part of. So you know, don't, don't assume that what you want to do, there isn't an audience for it, because you may be tapping into something brand new. Absolutely. And we have Dr. Oh God. B. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, really quick. I, I forgot I gave you that photo. I, was say, you provided <laughs> I told this. Dr. B he had to explain this, not to me, oh but God. to you. I was in a mood that day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Okay. Uh, yeah, so sorry. Um, yeah, so... God, I had an explanation for that, too. And I, no, I remember what it was now. I remember what it was now. Um, so it was interesting that... Uh, I, you know, being trained as a mental health professional, there is a certain stereotype around mental health professionals that, especially in some of our training, is true. Okay. They are a stodgy, but we are a stodgy bunch by and large. And um, I, I was always a little bit different from the rest of the people I trained with and found out why I'm ADHD and autistic. I can't help but be a little different. And, you know, after I got sent, I said this earlier, after I got sent to TwitchCon 2016 for work, and I was like, this is weird and kind of cool. I need to learn more about it. And I did. I started streaming a little bit. And now I you know, do mental health work with a lot of game studios and so forth, and ended up incorporating that into a lot of different ways. And you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna roll with this I'm, and let my freak flag fly. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not even a Freudian. I don't know, oh I'm my God. I'm so glad. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> and the lady, Lux, started direct from PS4. Added in a streaming from PC, and now with a capture card for console streaming, which is great. You started off casual, still casual, but with more equipment now. So you're doing creative and sewing streams, too. Yeah, it was interesting to start out a bit like, like Cypher in terms of being direct from console, because there's a lot less involved. You don't have alerts popping up, which is good and bad, because then you miss things, but also it's not distracting distracting for you. Um, you know, going to PC, which is where I did a lot of gaming and allowed you to have that more flexibility, and then eventually being like, oh, I want to do crafty things. Uh, and the differences that come with that. Like, I don't think I bought a capture card until like a year ago. Uh, it, relatively recent, because I was like, oh, well, I want to play a lot of Switch games right now. Uh, and I, I would like to occasionally stream, and if I'm only playing those games and I don't have a capture card, well then I guess I won't be streaming for the next six months. 
Uh, and it, there's a lot of weird justifications like that when you're like, oh, I guess I should buy this now. Uh, and I think, you know, it's just an evolution of, hey, I want to add this in. Okay, well, what do I need to do that? Uh, similarly, with like crafty stuff, it's uh, everybody keeps sewing is new for me. For, for the record, I've only been doing it for a few months. So I kind of started streaming at the same time that I started learning more of sewing. And so it's a lot of misadventures of me breaking my machine during the stream and then having to figure out how to fix it. So everybody just gets my stream of conscious thought as I'm like, well, I have now made a mistake. What do we do? <laughs> And I don't know, I mean, it's, it's certainly been interesting to the point earlier that like it evolves, you do different things, you find stuff that works for you and what works might not be the trendy thing right now, but it's about what content you wanna do and you find fulfilling. And I think that's just really important to take away if this is something you wanna do, whether it's as a hobby or a career, is that you're getting something out of it while you're doing it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Lady Lag. So we have some things to consider before you choose a path, all right? How much time can you put into your broadcasting, all right? What is your initial motivation for your content, all right? Are you willing to work for it or, you know, to make it a career? How much are you willing to spend on this if it's just a hobby, all right? If you're ready to make it a career, have you diversified your income streams? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask some of you to just touch on this, you know? What things did you consider before you chose a path? Anyone that wants to go. Can you repeat that? Sorry, I couldn't hear the lesson. Oh, I'm sorry. What are some things you considered before choosing your path in content creation? Achieving my path. Um, I was training as a prison psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm actually not kidding. Um, so I, I, was, I, I actually really liked working with the, that population. I couldn't stand most of the staff, but I liked working with the guys. And, you know, because I'm in a helping profession. You go where people need and want help. And but if you don't know, prison systems in the United States are the de facto residential mental health treatment for adults at this point. And um, I got into my career to make a difference and help people, and I was doing that. But after I got done with graduation and all of that, I interviewed where it was, and it was the weirdest interview ever. I totally botched it. It's a whole story unto itself. Didn't get the job, and I kind of had to forge my own path. And I somehow ended up in games and kind of putting a lot of fingers in a lot of different pies within games, because it's, it's, you know, gamers are my people, and I want to be able to serve them. And the best way to do that is basically being familiar with what my community is doing. And so streaming is a part of that. I need to know what's what. I don't have to have my finger on the pulse of everything, but I need to have some familiarity. And so that's where we are. I'll say from my point, I didn't really consider necessarily too much because I don't plan things. That's not who I am as a human. But uh, I did consider a lot about what, how much of myself do I really want to put out there? Because the internet can be weird. People can be weird. Um, hi, several of us on this panel right now have a panel tomorrow at 10 a.m. on parasocial relationships that you should attend. It's going to be an interesting discussion. But like, with my, my whole branding is built around the pirate thing, and that's, that's just been who I am for my entire life. I've always loved that aesthetic and that vibe. But, and I, so I leaned into, I, wanted, I knew I wanted to put out the things I was passionate about and things that I could communicate and that I wanted to help bring additional people into, which is why I split between the mini painting and the Final Fantasy stuff. Those are my two big like, areas of, of fandom. But even with that, there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to keep back for myself. And it's similar to, um, same as what Confetti was saying earlier, like even though Final Fantasy is half of my branding, I did not play 7 Remake on stream. I will not be playing 16 on stream when it comes out because those things are for me. Uh, I may go back and redo them afterwards to, to share that thing with people, but it was that kind of consideration of where do I want my boundaries to be and then a very, very, very harsh series of lessons in actually setting and enforcing those boundaries. One of my, when I first started streaming, the first video game I, I played through from start to finish, going in as a wee babby streamer who did not know how to, uh, to deal with backseating in streams, was Bloodborne. Oh, because uh, I make <laughs> terrible life choices. <laughs> I can tell, you all can tell all of our responses to that. I do not play any of the tryhard games on stream because. Never again. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah the, the reaction to that was palpable. It's like, yeah, no, that was a mistake. Don't because do you that. wanted to feel bad about yourself? Oh, well, you know, I, I wanted to lean into doing things I'm really good at. And that is something I've had a lifelong of practice at. So, well you know, done. Right? Well <laughs> done. <laughs> That's, uh, but no, like, it's, it, seriously, though, Lee, you know, figure out what your thing is and make that be your thing. And again, don't assume there is not an audience for your thing, but make sure to like, figure out what are your boundaries. How much of this do you want to put into and how much of this, if any, if you're comfortable putting it all that, great. Make sure you have other stuff that's just for you. But how much of that, where is your cutoff? And learn how to enforce those boundaries because mm -hmm. people will push them. Absolutely. And now it's time for Q&A. We have two microphones here. You can start lining up. Remember, ask a question. We don't need a backstory or context, all right? No comments, replying onto another person's question or addressing a previous question, all right? Your question should be on a topic for what was discussed on the panel. Well, we've sat up here and talked all this time and nobody got a question. <laughs> I will shame someone. We can keep going. Some, we got some lines forming. Oh, hey. Oh, it should be on. Oh, oh. It's not. That is not on. Huh. <laughs> Can you project? project? Can you just project? <laughs> Crazy name, I know. Uh, but for me, streaming, right, like for me, I guess, I want streaming to be a career. Like this is my dream. But right now, it's like my thought process, it's, it's a hobby. But should I maybe change that to be like, no, this is my dream career, go hard at it. Or is it okay to be like, okay, I can do this kind of casually for fun. And then when it like happens, then switch the game up. So that is a question actually none of us should answer for you because we don't know your situation and your life like that. Um, the question is, you have to sit down and think, do you have the time to invest? Can you stream more than well, however long you're streaming now? And sit down and have a hard conversation with yourself about your finances. Because I've, I sat down and calculated, and I live in Chicago. It, that's public knowledge, and I'm not telling you exactly where I live. No. <laughs> For me to make streaming solely my career and do nothing else, I need 2,000 consistent tier one subs every month. I don't have 2,000 consistent tier one subs every month. So also think about what can you do outside of streaming to make up the deficit? Are you using social media effectively? Do you have moderators? What is your content plan? Because the amount of work you're gonna put into making this a career, it's gonna take time. I've been streaming for eight years. I still can't pay off my bills off streaming. So that's unfortunate. I mean, it's, I, I appreciate you asking us, and maybe we can have a one on one later. Yeah. But that's not really a question any of us should answer. We can answer and give you advice, but we should not answer that for you. That's reasonable. Thank you. Well, and I want to throw in one more thing. Why? Because it's, your, your motivation is going, for, is going to make a big difference. Um, I think it was Lady Luck who said earlier, it, oh no, it was Milady Confetti who said, it, you know, if you're just chasing the almighty dollar, for a lot of people that's gonna be a pretty hollow pursuit and people will do a lot of things for the almighty dollar, but they will also burn out for the almighty dollar. So before you, you know, a conversation that I, would, I had with myself when, you know, Tanya and I were talking about the exact, the exact same thing is, why do I wanna do it? And I had to be honest with myself that my why just wasn't strong enough to start building out a full-time stream. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, thank you very much for your answer. Thank you. We can start over here. Um, so I really enjoy streaming, but I'm also in school. So what would you say is the most effective way to keep up a presence in streaming while going through school? Schedule, time management like that is going to be and the thing is you need to make sure that I, I know I'm a higher ed so I'm a little biased but the thing is I'm going to be real with you because I did that too 
you have to have time management and your school is always gonna be your priority. If you have to study instead of stream, cancel the stream and study. Mm -hmm. Do what you gotta do because you're putting all that money out for your education, you better prioritize that. Um, and the thing is, like, you know, for some people, um, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't speaking into the mic, that's rude of me. Um, I know for, like, some people, like, um, there are some people I know who are in my college who took off and were able to leave stream. That was not my story. So, you know, realistically, um, time management is going to be your friend. If, you're, um, if your school has, like, a resource center or, like, trainings on, like, self-management, time management, what that looks for. Um, like, I know my college had, like, very specific resources that, like, had integrations and stuff like that that you could do. Uh, like, they had, they had an app. Um, so that worked for me. But um, there's also a lot of time management resources, like, free on YouTube and stuff like that. But that is going to be your friend and prioritize your studies. Just to back, back onto that too, with the, the prioritize your studies aspect to it, again, yeah, if it's a choice between you can do one or the other, absolutely always fall on the schooling because you will always benefit from having that fallback. And especially with a lot of communities, it's really easy to fall into the trap of thinking that you're going to, for want of a better term, age out. I think a lot of us were, I mean, I'm in my mid to late 30s now, and I think a lot of us started streaming around similar like, age ranges. There's, there's a community out there no matter what. So get the schooling done first. You can always focus on the, the streaming once that's done and you have more free time as well. Not to say don't, like, try and keep up with both, but yeah, absolutely. If it's ever a choice between you have to pick one or the other to focus on right now, always, always do the schooling because you'll never regret having that full back on. Well, and additionally, any, tr any additional training you have in uh, even a really oddball topic is going to be a further talent you can bring in to diversify what niche you can do in i again psychologist <laughs> i never thought oh you're a psych major i'm, I'm psych so major. sorry <laughs> i am so <laughs> sorry oh you are a masochist okay um, <laughs> we'll commiserate um, but yeah it's it's going to give you any any additional career paths you have are going to give you additional creative insight in streaming. Mm -hmm. I agree. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Just a quick addition onto that too. If you're looking at doing streaming as a career and you are in school and you have the option to take a business management course, do it. It will help you so much because that you are going to be running a small business as a streamer. You're your product. If you have the opportunity to take one, I promise you, you will not regret that. It will help. Hi, so my question is, um, what techniques for increasing your efficiency with workflow do you guys have, whether it be software or hardware that you use that can help you be more productive with less amount of time? I'm looking right at Mandy. Oh, oh no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it, it, there's a couple of things, and it's all going to be based on your style. In the same way that people learn differently, the way that you can build efficiency in what you do is going to vary. Uh, so think about your strengths, like what are the things that you do really well, and then look for the tools that help you improve that further. I think that there's a lot of ways, especially with technology, that you can do automation, uh, and a lot of um, tools that allow you to hook into things like Twitch or Twitter, like you can automate your go-live tweets. You can, you know, you can do automation, like make use of the various bots that you can use in chat and set them on timers. Like there's a lot of little things you can do to lighten the mental load of the things you have to do manually. And figuring out what works for you is really gonna be contingent on what are you really good at and then what are the things that are tools that can help you improve. I'm sorry, that wasn't very specific, but I hope it helps. <laughs> Does this work? Oh, hi, howdy. Um, so I'm Gerb Sims on Twitch, and I, um, I'm a master's forensic counselor, so I do prison psychology. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a, mo this is like moss to a flame here. Everybody's coming out, like, I, just, I do psychology. I felt attracted to this room. I was like, someone gets prison jokes. Okay, so um, I do uh, gaming, but I also do mental health talks and Q&As and things like that. But I'm also a practicing therapist. So not just, not just as another you know, psycholo uh, psychology professional, but in general, balancing working with people who can contact you individually and being a streamer, do you have any suggestions on kind of the, the difficulty of not wanting your 
patients to find you or <laughs> your uh, viewers to try and have you be their therapist, just kind of balancing two professions that are the opposite of privacy regulations. <laughs> Well, notice I didn't tell you what the name of my practice is. Yeah, right. Right. So I don't put that on my Twitter. I don't put that on my Twitch. I don't put that anything. I, people know I do practice. But um, beyond that, I put it into my, my consent forms that I don't discuss my other job. Um, and I don't, you know, there, I actually oh, have a social smart. media agreement with my clients. We can probably talk, uh, talk more detail yep. about that. Cool tools. Thanks. So uh, uh, just a follow up to that. Um, on the other end, then, when you're streaming, how do you ensure that you know viewers don't try and find or ask you to be their therapist or at any if you're a con consultant and people ask you to you know paint their house? <laughs> um, I, I we have a lot of disclaimers on our talk show. We have a lot of ways we talk about how to talk about that. We've uh, take this actually offers workshops on how to be a mental health advocate as a streamer without mm -hmm. crossing the line into being a professional, cool. working on some free resources for that because there's some very definitive lines that applies to everybody, by the way, because right. I know y'all get people asking you for mental health advice. Um, but yeah, there's just, and basically for me, it comes down to opinion. I can't mm -hmm. get my opinion on their case. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, so I'm pretty squarely in the hobby category just because I don't have a lot of time to stream and whatever little time that I have, I dedicate to streaming. Uh, but there's something that I really enjoy that I think is a little bit like above that pay grade, which is you know scheduling collaborations with other streamers and getting a ton of other streamers together, but it's very difficult um, to do that with the limited time that I have that they don't have the same problem. All right, problem so with. I'm gonna be that person and ask sorry. you what, what's yeah. above, what makes me happy is hearing a question. Yeah, sorry. Um, so how do I like navigate um, doing you know, collaborations with other streamers when it's not something that I have a ton of time to do myself? Honestly, it's, it's just like scheduling anything else, like anyone who has played TTRPGs knows the, the difficulty of getting your gaming group together on a, ru a routine schedule. Um, just try, it's just a case of trying to find people who have a similar schedule to you, honestly, and like, be, accept that maybe, maybe you need to bring down the scale of what you're looking to do. Like if you're trying to get five or six people together, you may be shooting too big. Try to start with maybe one or two other people and just get that going and, and just accept that Sometimes the group you want, their schedules are never going to work out. Accept that and you broaden the search. Find people who, who are. Time zones are the, the death to, to many of us, <laughs> especially those of us who have a lot of friends who live in European time zones. Yep. That's Thanks, wild, but we desperately want to collaborate too. Sometimes it sucks, it just doesn't work out. And if it's something that you're, it kind of goes a little, maybe a little like counter to to our saying don't like you know focus you know focus on the day job focus on making sure you have the diverse in income streams but maybe consider is is it a thing that you can take like a day of PTO from from your job if that's a thing you can do to make it work in this one time and then you're just getting the, the more experience doing that that mm. would would help but yeah just be realistic and unfortunately sometimes you have to accept that the, it's never going to work with the people you really want so find different people who have a similar schedule to you. Mm. And I'll just throw in, like, it's, it's kind of like anything else. It's what's a priority to you? What's your focus? Like, what do you really want to get out of this? Or what's the fulfillment you get? And then to Pirate's point, it's scope. Uh, you know, scope out. Like, what's your bottom? Like, to do this thing and for me to really enjoy it, I need three people. Okay. And if I did this in my ideal way, I would have seven. Okay. Like, it's, it's almost like any project management to some extent to be able to say like, what's important? What do I want to focus on? And then how do I scope this based on the time and resources I have available? It sounds terrible, I'm sorry y'all. It sounds like, like real career advice, but those are the things you got to think about when you're trying to do anything, which is to say, what do I really want to accomplish here? Two minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hi there, uh, I've been streaming nine years. Um, I'm not in psychology. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I've never been able to answer the question of whether or not it's actually a hobby for me or, or I want to turn it into a career. Because I'll tell you, like, uh, I'll, I'll pick some games that are trending, but I'll see no viewership. But sometimes I'll pick a market and I'll get 30 viewers and, and, and hosts and, and subs and stuff. And I'm like, holy cow, you know. But I've never been able to answer that question of, of whether or not it's a hobby or a career. What convinced you uh, that it was, would have been a career for you? What, what thought or what moment did you have? For me, I didn't have a choice. 
COVID shows down, because I was in it, working in admissions, um, and my office had nothing, and the unemployment system in the United States is trash. So that was the only f force source of income that I had. So it was literally my back was against the wall, do or die, and I did, and it worked out. Yeah, I think it just comes down to that idea of like, do you want this to be your primary income? And are you gonna put the time and resources into it the same way that you would a real job? Uh, a real job, I'm sorry to have used those words. Uh, the same way that you would a any other career that doesn't get the same type of scrutiny as something like content creator. And I think that's like, I have a day job. I'm fine with my day job. I'm gonna continue to have a day job. Streaming is nice. I have specific goals for what I wanna accomplish with streaming that is not making it a full-time career. And so I think it's just important to say like, what do you want this to do for you? Whether that's financially in your fulfillment or what have you. And that career line is gonna be, do you want this to be your job? With all of the wrappings that come with that, which I know we all hate, but 